Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. If you're looking for a centerpiece fish for a medium sized tank, then you may well be tempted by one of the smaller members of the cichlid family, and in this case, the Epistogramma agassiziae. This species comes in a range of different colours, varying from gold reds to super reds. Mine, though, are the rather more readily available double red. These small cichlids grow to a maximum size of about 8cm in length for a large male, while 5 to 6cm is more reasonable for one of the females. Both sexes, though, have lovely colours and a feisty character that earn them a place as one of the most popular epistos available to the hobby. But what are Epistogramma agassiziae like to keep, and what kind of setup do they need? Well, these Epistos hail from the Amazon basin from Brazil to Peru, where they inhabit shallow, slow-moving tributaries. Their habitat would typically include leaf litter, a sandy or peaty substrate, and would be well shaded from overhead foliage, creating quite a murky water system. In the home aquarium, though, they are really quite adaptable, and so long as you provide them with a tank that's at least 60cm long by 30cm wide for a pair, and give them plenty of leafy places to hide and a temperature that's between 24 and 28 degrees C, then they will settle in just fine. They are rather delicate when it comes to nitrites in the water, so be sure to only add them to a well-cycled tank, but once established, I found them to be really quite hardy. Mine have never seemed to be bothered by either light levels or having a lighter substrate, but they do like to be close to cover. And just to point out, if you're not looking to breed the fish, then you don't need to provide them with a cave. They are perfectly happy so long as they've got a nice dark corner they can go and lurk in if they feel the need to. One of the great things about Epistogram agassiziae is that they can be kept individually. They don't need a school or anything like that, and so you can keep just one male or a single female, and if you don't want to breed your fish, in fact, it is a much easier way of keeping them because it gets rid of any potential aggressive issues that you have around spawning time. I also find that lone fish are perfectly confident so long as their tank has been placed somewhere that's quiet, and I don't find that they need dither fish either, they seem to be perfectly confident even when they are completely solitary. If you are going to keep them with other fish though, it's worth bearing in mind that flowing tail on the male. I wouldn't want to keep him with anything that's fast moving, boisterous fin nippers, so no tiger barbs or anything like that for example but gentle-natured, soft little fish like tetras, little danios, rasboras, that sort of thing are absolutely fine. The females can be kept with any fish that's not big enough to eat her, as she doesn't have that long, flowing, tempting fins and tail. I do tend to find the females are also rather faster and a bit more alert to danger than the males, so if someone's coming to nip her, she will have spotted it before they get there. In fact, if I was looking to buy just one of these guys, I would seriously consider getting a female. They are beautiful in their own right, they really are a lovely looking fish, and if you didn't know what the male looked like, you'd be really quite impressed by her. She's got this deep orange and yellow colours, and that lovely bold black lateral stripe. I think female cichlids tend to get overlooked quite badly, simply because the males are so very showy. And yet, they're smaller, and when they're not breeding, they don't need to hold a territory, so they're very easy going fish to keep. One aquarium inhabitant you certainly do not want to keep your epistos with is shrimp. In the wild, epistos are micro-predators hunting down invertebrate prey that they can find in amongst the leaf litter, and they have a fine set of very sharp little teeth that are perfectly good at ripping apart their prey. And so, as the saying goes with fish, if it will fit in their mouth, they will eat it. When it comes to epistos and shrimp, the episto will make it fit. Luckily though, there are plenty of other things other than shrimp that epistos will gladly eat, and they do well on a varied diet of flakes, pellets, frozen and live foods. I do find they can suffer a little bit from being fussy eaters, especially if you keep them on just one diet for too long, after which they seem to refuse any new food types. To avoid this, just be sure to vary what you're giving them every few days, which you should be doing as part of a varied diet anyway. If you are looking to breed your fish, then you are obviously going to want to get a pair. Luckily, they are very easy to sex. The adult male is much larger and much more brightly coloured, with that classic tapering spade or comet shaped tail. He also has that elongated dorsal fin. Females, on the other hand, are smaller, ranging between orange and brown, although she will turn a very bright yellow when she's in the mood to breed. And she has more of a curved half moon shaped tail. 
When they're younger, sexing can be a little bit more challenging. Also, when they're stressed from being in a shop, for example, then the sexes tend to both look like an underdeveloped female. But you just have to look at that tail. The males will always have it tapering to a point, whereas the females will be curved. So it's a good starting point when you're trying to pick out a pair. It's worth pointing out as well, though, that if you're looking to breed your fish, having a male and female doesn't necessarily mean they will actually accept each other. Apistos are feisty little fish, and the females can be really quite picky about which males they want. Size and confidence certainly seem to be main factors, and males who are smaller, perhaps because they're a little bit too young, for example, will be rejected by the females. This will start off with a simple shaking of her tail in his face to ward him off, but it can become really quite aggressive chasing as she gets more and more fed up with him being around. And so if you buy fish when they're young, you may well want to separate the males from the females just while they grow up and get their confidence. Then you can introduce the two back together again once they've matured. When introduced, you can expect there to be some bickering between the pair as they get to know each other, but so long as they can get away from each other and hide if the squabbling starts to get nasty, then things should settle down between them within a couple of weeks. If you're looking to raise fry, provide the pair with a cave in their own breeding tank, and the female will lay her eggs inside for the male to fertilise. The female can then be left with them, and she will care for her brood, but it's worth removing the male as she can find his presence really quite stressful, and this can lead her to consume her brood, believing that they're not going to survive. Assuming their tank is suitable for them, then Epistogram agassizii are really quite a hardy species, but they can suffer really badly from stress if either the water conditions are poor or if they're getting excessively bullied. My male, for example, has scars on his face from where he had hole in the head, which is a parasitic condition cichlids are particularly vulnerable to when they're stressed. It was my fault. I didn't remove him from a tank when he was in there with a particularly possessive female. She wouldn't let him leave one little corner of the tank. She wouldn't even let him feed. The stress built up, his immune system fell, and then so the both of us basically had to go through a couple of months with him in quarantine, being treated with salt baths and antibiotics. Needless to say, it wasn't much fun for either of us. He made a full recovery, as you can see, but the scar is a constant reminder to me that while Epistos are full of bravado, they still like a nice, quiet life that's as stress-free as possible, and that way you can be sure to keep them nice and happy and healthy. Overall, though, I would say Epistos are a fairly easy species to keep, so long as your tank is mature, and they're very easy to keep, in fact, if you just want to keep the one of them. They're very fun to breed, and they show their best colours and characters when they're displaying to each other, just so long as they get along reasonably well. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about Epistogramma agassizii. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!